hi everyone welcome to our new video so we are going to talk about unit hydrographs and I'm calling this as introduction one because we may need more than one video to just understand what unit hydrograph is why we need it and what can we do with it so with that let's get started what I'm showing you on this is what we have learned so far. So on the left here, you see a rainfall hydrograph. Um, so the blue is excess rainfall, the green is loss. So until now we have learned how to quantify and measure total rainfall and then how to also calculate loss. So in this case, loss is the water that we lose to the subsurface due to infiltration so we looked at different methods to calculate and estimate infiltration so <clears throat> and then what you see here is a watershed so the rainfall this rainfall takes place on this watershed and some of that water gets lost and then this water travels to the nearest streams and eventually it comes out of this watershed so then what we have started is rainfall which is depth and that depth of water gets converted into volume at this outlet and to do that we just multiply the depth of water uh, by the area of the watershed and you end up with a volume and then we measure how much of that volume is flowing per unit time and then from that we get this discharge hydrograph and we also looked at how to measure the hydrograph at the outlet and how to measure the stream flow and we also looked at how to separate base flow from it to get direct runoff so this is what happens when we have rainfall we start with the rainfall and we end up with the hydrograph <coughs> Now, we, what we want to do now is to see how do we simulate this process. So this is what is happening in, in uh, Rio on the watershed. The question is, how do we come up with a math mathematical formulation or a conceptual formulation of how this water depth from rainfall gets transformed into this discharge hydrograph? So coming back to HEC HMS, so we have looked at the transform method and we have used unit hydrograph. If you remember in that transform method, we have used the SCS unit hydrograph. So <clears throat> this is what we will be studying now is what is that unit hydrograph and how do we use it? So now that we know why we need unit hydrograph, let's also discuss some terms. The first term I want you to know, and you already know this, but we will just reiterate, is what is excess rainfall. So excess rainfall is that rainfall that doesn't get lost into the ground and that contributes to the overland flow and that overland flow then contributes to direct runoff. So excess rainfall. So that's total rainfall minus loss. So loss in this case is due to infiltration. In a event-based model that's the only loss we consider if we are thinking about continuous model then we have other losses due to evapotranspiration and so on but for now let's not worry about that so remember excess rainfall the other thing i want you to remember or recall is what is direct runoff so direct runoff is total stream flow minus base flow okay so 
and excess rainfall contributes to direct runoff. So if we have excess rainfall of let's say 2 inch, then if we calculate the equivalent depth of direct runoff from that excess rainfall, that should also be equal to 2 inch. <coughs> so remember excess rainfall direct runoff and coming back to why we need unit hydrograph. So unit hydrograph is just one of the ways to transform excess rainfall to direct runoff. There are other methods to do that and if we get time we'll get into those. So for now the focus of our um, video here is to discuss what unit hydrograph is. Okay. Now that we know why we need unit hydrograph, let's try to define and understand what unit hydrograph is. So just create a new page here. <coughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a precipitation hydrograph or to be specific excess rainfall hydrograph and instead of reporting the depth on y-axis I'm reporting the intensity in inch per hour and this is our time <coughs> So let's also say this is 0 0.5 inch, this is 1 inch, this is 1 hour, this is 2 hour, this is 3 hour. That should be enough. And I'm going to assume that we have a rainfall event which is lasting for 1 hour and the total depth of excess rainfall from that is 1 inch. Okay. So we get 1 inch of excess rainfall and that 1 inch of excess rainfall will create a direct runoff hydrograph at the watershed outlet. So this is, I will use the same color that I used for this rainfall. So this is my hydrograph resulting from one inch of rainfall and that rainfall lasted for one hour. So I'm just going to call this T1. Okay. So because we have one inch of rainfall, excess rainfall, the volume under this hydrograph or the direct run of hydrograph is also going to be one inch okay and this is the unit hydrograph corresponding to that so from one inch of rainfall for one hour we get this so that's why i'm calling this one hour unit hydrograph <coughs> okay now let's assume we have another event so in this case the intensity is 0.5 inch per hour and that event lasts for two hours. So if you think about this, again the total depth of excess rainfall that we have from this event is also one inch, but the rainfall lasted for two hours, okay? And from this event, we get another hydrograph. So because the intensity is small and it lasts longer, so this is what we get. So this is two hour unit hydrograph. I'm calling this two hour unit hydrograph because the excess rainfall lasted for two hours. The black hydrograph is one hour unit hydrograph because the excess rainfall lasted for one hour. Now let's do one more. So in this case, let's say this is 0.33 inch per hour and this lasts for three hours. Which means again, the total excess rainfall that we get from this event is also one inch and that will create another hydrograph. So this is our three hour unit hydrograph. <coughs> so
So if you think about this, a unit hydrograph is a direct run of hydrograph that we get from one inch of excess rainfall. Now for each unit hydrograph, I used also the time duration associated with the excess rainfall. So depending on how long the excess rainfall lasts, a unit hydrograph will have a duration associated with it. Okay. And you can see the base time is also different for each of these unit hydrographs. Okay. So if you understand this, then we can define what a unit hydrograph is. Okay. So let's write the definition of unit hydrograph. <coughs> and because we used the time duration to define each of these, a unit hydrograph is always defined by using the duration. So I'm going to say a T hour unit hydrograph. <clears throat> so T hour unit hydrograph is defined as a direct run of hydrograph resulting from one inch or one centimeter or unit depth it could be centimeter inch unit depth of excess rainfall falling uniformly over a watershed at a constant rate for T hour. Okay. So things we need to remember is it's a direct run of hydrograph. Okay. And it is resulting from a unit depth. So depending on the units we are using, it could be either one centimeter or one inch and it's excess rainfall, not total rainfall. So unit depth of excess rainfall and it assumes that it the rainfall is uniform all over the watershed at a constant rate. If I go back to this, so you can see the rainfall pulses that I have used here for two hour and three hour, the rainfall intensity is constant. So the rainfall is taking place uniformly at a constant rate for T hours. And the hydrograph, the direct run of hydrograph that results from this is called a T hour unit hydrograph. So that is the technical definition of a unit hydrograph and that is all we need to know at this point. In the next video, we will study or we will look at the assumptions that are used in the unit hydrograph theory and how valid they are and what is some of the theory behind the unit hydrograph concept. So with that, I'll stop here. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I will see you soon in my next video. Thank you and bye.